Within the veil is fragrance poured upon thee, without the veil that fragrance shed abroad. abroad. Within the veil is hand shall tune the music which sounds on earth the praises of thy God. There's something wrong. I, th I think you said today when you were at the Vanity Fair the other day. Christian Booksellers Association, which is two doors from Babylon. Isn't it something when you have Christians live with dogs, little coats on dogs, Jesus saves, and shirt buttons that have Jesus and other s rotten stuff. The man said, well it's the only testimony some people have. Well why not get them saved? <laughs> That's the only testimony they have? Boy, if your button comes off, has anybody seen my testimony around here? <laughs> That'd be terrible. <laughs> the whole thing was Babylon. They had little stuffed dogs with Jesus on them. That's degrading. It's Babylon as far as I'm concerned. Do we have to wear a badge, a sign that the living Christ is in us? Isn't there a dignity about our language, about our attitude? I don't care if you're a deacon or a beacon or what in the world you are. I won't ask your friend what kind of a person you are. I'll slip up to the back door when you're away and ask your wife how you live. Do you get wild? Do you get angry? Do you get distressed? Or do you live as calmly as Jesus would under those circumstances? The prophet Amos. Yeah. <clears throat> Said, Behold the day, saith the Lord. The days come, saith the Lord, that I will send a famine in the land. Yes. Famine. Not a famine of bread, yeah. nor a thirst for water, but of hearing yeah. the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, hmm. and from the north even to the east they shall run to and fro, yeah. to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. Hmm. Is that literally like no Bibles or is it that the word is from the living word it doesn't I mean you can read it I go and hear a fellow and he preaches there's no passion there's no tears there's no you know I'd, I'd rather write Richard Baxter I preached as if to never preach again and as a dying man to dying man no you think this fellow's a professional he gets paid when he when he steps out of the pulpit he says hey John uh, what about a, a round of golf on Wednesday or Thursday and immediately they switch from the spiritual and eternal to some stupid thing. I wouldn't take any notice of them anyhow. I said, you go to the national convention of your denomination and stand up and say, I've got a glorious text for you. There's a thousand pastors here from our denomination. I've got a glorious text from you. You're dead. What would they do? They'd glare at you. I said, Paul could. You're dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Oh, they believe you're dead. You preach as though you're dead. You act as though you're dead. But are you dead to all the world's glamour? Are you dead to the rivalry in your denomination? Are you dead to climbing up the ladder? They tell me preachers wept when, uh, when Criswell finally decided to have jo Joel Gregory from Travis Avenue as his assistant. Other men thought, well, I deserve it after him. True, it was there 45 years. He's been there 42 years. I'm a young man, I should go in. So what? People ask me, what do you do to be great? And I wash somebody's feet. And there's only one way you can worship, and that is to worship God in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit, I am a spirit. My spirit must connect with God's spirit. Most of our religion today in Christian centers is soulish. It's not, it's not spiritual, it's soulish. That's why kids like to go to these rock concerts. Because it's soulish, it stirs the soul. And they go out and sin and do all the devilish things they want to do. There's no change there. You can't glorify God. You can't have a vision of the glory of God and turn around and be mean to your wife or children. Well, brethren, what I want to say is that either the Bible is absolute or obsolete. Which is it? Is God all he says he is? Is Hebrews 11.6 what we need to rediscover? He that cometh to God must believe that he is. What does it matter about swagger and all the rest? I know it's, it's objectionable, it hurts, 
and people are tell me now they're already cracking jokes about Swaggart. If uh, if God told me he could go on preaching, a guy told me the other night, somebody said, well, if God says he can go on preaching, the mess he's in, why didn't God tell him there's a cop following him out the road in a car? So, the mother's dumb as they appear to be. Now in the 32nd chapter when he comes down the mountain he's blood red with anger. God is angry, angry and he's angry because he's in tune with God. How often do you get angry? Are you in tune with the Holy Ghost? When the Spirit of God is offended, are you offended or do you just go on buying and selling and eating and drinking and all the normal things that the man next door does? I'm supposed to be a spiritual man. I'm supposed to be in tune with the infinite. I'm supposed to be regulated by the Holy Ghost, not the traditions of my setup or denomination. Don't ever measure your, don't ever trust in your experiences. It's a dangerous thing when we try and prove our experiences as a source of our strength. The only strength we have is in the Word of God, in the obedience to the Spirit of God. But I'm quite sure of this, God is going to show our generation we're, we're, we're at the point of bankruptcy, we can't turn around as a nation, you can have your moral majority if you like. They never worked anyhow, if you think I'm wrong, ask Gideon. How did he get on with the moral majority? Why didn't Jesus wait for the 500 brethren that were, saw him at once together? Only 120 came out of 500 brethren, 380 of them never turned up. It's like that. Look, if you're determined to be more than somebody with the knowledge of God, but real experience of Him, you better get ready to walk alone, be quiet, let other people throw rocks at you. It's easy to uh, accept the contradiction of sinners, it's when you get the contradiction of saints it hurts. When people who profess to be spiritual, uh, Try and weigh you down because you're praying more, or fasting more, or doing something else more. Elijah wasn't born in a day for sure. He had some years of quietness and then out of that he had to come and publicly display that faith and courage that God had been building into him for those three and a half years alone. But boy, the nation it soon knew when he came. And the same with Elijah. Let a prophet of God arise in the true sense of the word. He won't need any advertising plans. He won't need to get on public TV. The magnetism is the abiding presence and power of God. 